Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Energy Unleashed podcast with my co-host, Kim Hess. Hello. Hello. Oh, and I'm Suzanne, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Forgot Suzanne. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that this is going to be kind of an interesting overall subject matter today. We talk about a lot of my client, um, kind of like client issues or client scenarios that give me some you know, leeway to talk about them anonymously. But this is kind of an overall blanket situation. Kim and I were talking recently. You know, it's such a hard time right now. Well, God, I, I feel like we've been saying that for like three years. I mean, really, seriously. Right? It's got to get easier. I feel Go like ahead. we've been saying it's a hard time right now. The energies are tough. Um, but I do think it's jumbly right now. For some people, they're riding this wave of the first quarter a little bit more smoothly. It sort of depends on where you're at individually, but then others are really having a difficult time. Mm -hmm. And we ourselves use a lot of my client stuff, but our own stuff too. And I think what we were talking about is really pertinent for right now in terms of how do you connect? How do you connect with something bigger? How do you actually connect with guidance or have the faith that, oh, everything's fine. I mean, I was talking with a really peer client last night saying, you know, it's so hard when you're a worker, you know, somebody like me out in the grids or you're in the elements and we do a lot of like universal cosmic earth, whatever work. And we know, or do we, we know in our heart or in our head or somewhere that this ascension process is working, that all is fine, that everything's done and we're just playing catch up. And then we're in the middle of all this crap and this 3D bullshit. And we're like, how do you how do you connect that yeah. so that you actually feel good when everything seems mayhem? And that's what I was talking about last night with this particular peer client who's also a worker. And I said, this is hard because I'm not tapped into the same level as when I'm doing grid work, for example. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm in the grids and I know it's okay. And I know blah, blah, blah. And when that particular mission or project was done, I don't have that huge connection knowing. And so I still have faith. I still believe it, but part of me waffles. That's yeah. a good word. Waffles. Waffles. Waffles is a really good word because I have days, same thing, where I feel really in tune and connected and more balanced mm -hmm. um, in what's happening. And then I have days I'm like, what is, like, you just don't even know what to do with yourself because <laughs> it's so crazy. Like you read an article about child trafficking and about, you know, how people are coming across the border in crazy ways that are dangerous. And 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 then you, you're you like, how is everything okay? It can't be Okay. Or you know, aliens in the Miami mall. <laughs> oh my God. Serious aliens in the Miami mall. I like, I'm like, I probably have been at that mall. I, I have to look it up, but it, it, everything is so bizarrely unstable that I think what we would like to kind of unleash when we're talking is, is how does one actually connect with guidance, especially if it's new? Mm -hmm. Because I also had a client this week that he was sort of, he didn't come in under duress, I won't say that, but his <laughs> wife brought him. <laughs> and he had this kind of he had this kind of look at first, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I asked him, I go, are you here under duress? And he said, no, actually he had had a very difficult accident that was really affecting his motor skills and cognitive, et cetera. And he said he was willing to, you know, look at anything. But he was a really delightful man in that he and I'm not judging anything or at any time when we do these, by the way, it's all just energy for me he didn't really think about guidance. He was very 3D and that isn't saying that's bad or good. He was just very living his life very 3D. And oftentimes we get our ass kicked by spirit when it's time for us to wake up or connect with guidance or reconnect, hence me, you know, reconnect with guidance, right? I mean, we get, we get pounded and it was really cute because I was asking him, you know, prior to this really kind of difficult thing that he's going through. Did you ever have any so-called wake up calls from your higher self or your guidance? Yeah. And his wife's over in the corner doing this, you know? And it was funny because he had had them. So I think one of the things I want to put forward is oftentimes we do it when we have something really difficult happen, whether it's trauma, whether it's an accident, whether it's sickness, whether it's somebody in our family, you know, employment, whatever. Oftentimes this is when we look for guidance, which is really kind of sad, right? I mean, that's when we we're desperate. Yeah. Because I think we need guidance every day. 
you know, I <laughs> think you know, seriously, just yeah. going to the grocery store, I need guidance. I need, I'm like, give me grace, you know, as I walk into this place, because, you know, I, it gets kind of crazy sometimes, but yeah. And, go, and going I, back to what you're saying, we weren't taught any of this. We weren't taught how to connect to any of this as a child, no. you know, or young adult, or even, I mean, I didn't connect with anything until like 10 years ago. Especially Catholicism. And again, we're not knocking anybody's dogmatic choices, but you know, you're separated, you know, that's that he up there and you got to be separate. And really awakening process we talked about it the other way is really about coming back to oneness and integration. And, you know, it, it's really the opposite of what we learn. So it is very difficult. And I, and I'm not knocking men either, but more women are opening up faster and quicker. However, I told my peer associate last night that I am seeing more and more men in my office lately, which is thrilling to me that they're also going, holy bananas, I'm like getting knocked on the head, you know, but we don't want to not see the signs. I think that's what I want to start with, that the signs are there and we don't want to not see the signs until we get literally knocked on the head, you know, right. and that can be a fall like me and break <clears> something, or that can be, you know, a traumatic accident or a sickness or a disease. And so it's looking for the signs and being present to actually make the effort to have a connection. It comes from you because the guides are already there, right? Mm -hmm. Guidance is there. Your higher self doesn't go anywhere. So it's a belief system change right out of the gate to say, oh gosh, no one's going to hand me this on a silver platter. They hand you the signs, but they're not going to hand you that connection until you're the one that's actually taking responsibility for that relationship. Well, right? most of the things that like I'm thinking about different people and myself, a lot of these things are things that make you stop in your tracks. You have no control, right? right. Like look at you, you're laying on the ground breaking after breaking your wrist. You have yep. like, I don't have control right now. I can't even get out of the ground. Yep. You know, it makes you stop. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Even um, it, it, I mean, there's other situations too, but even finding out something about somebody else can stop you. Mm -hmm. where you evaluate and you look for guidance, you know, with, with what that might be. Right. Um, it's taking them that time, I guess. And, and I think people envy other people having guide connections. And I really would invite people to not do that because the way that you connect is going to be very personal. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was first getting into this and Sylvia Brown was still kind of a hot item, you know, long dead now. And she, she was that psychic that talked about Francine was her guide. And she talked about her, like she was seriously just sitting right next to her, which in some case, I probably think she was. Could be, yeah. but I, I think it's funny that I would back then go, how come I don't have a Francine? I mean, I want a Francine to tell me what to do every day. <laughs> now, looking back all these years later, I think that there's a fine line too, in terms of giving your guides so much of the power to navigate your life for you. They're there to guide, hence the word. They're mm -hmm. there to guide. They're not there to drive. And there are some people that almost get to the extent of, I can't make that decision without this. And mm -hmm. it's important to me to feel like I've integrated my guidance so that my essence and my knowing is coming from me with help, not just a hundred percent outside of myself. Cause then it's really not all that much different than going to a human being and trying to get, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? You know, does your, does your intuition get stronger with that connection then is what I'm thinking. Like you're, when you say it's all in together, like I feel yeah. like after connecting, not even knowing who my guides are or whatever, um, I just know that they're there and I know the angelics are there. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like my intuition is so much more spot on and readily there. Like you don't and really as are, about it. As are the psychic skill responses, mm, especially okay. for me, because I, I work at those. So mm -hmm. um, again, the client last night was saying something, you know, I wonder if this is happening and I hear and my mouth immediately goes, no, that's not what it is. And I'm like, and I, and I catch myself like, wow, okay, because- <laughs> Because you get to some, certain people get to the point where you're just the vessel. It's just coming through. The guidance is coming through. And oftentimes my mouth will just start to, blah, 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 and I'm listening to myself 
-hmm. the first time. And that's when you know it is true guidance because I don't know that. I don't even know what I'm talking about sometimes. And it's like, well, that's interesting. So I think that there's all levels of guidance and how it comes through the body. But I distinctly do the work to sort of merge those together so that my Suzanne-ness is always in there too, which means whenever you're with somebody like somebody like me, remember your information is coming through that person. So it doesn't have to be 100% for you either. Right, right. So um, let's backtrack just a little bit because when your client is asking a question and you're hearing an answer, are you tapped into their higher self, their guidance, or is it your higher self? I think it's a merging of both because I'm a full body <clears throat> empath and I merged with them the minute that they walk in the door. And in my mm -hmm. opinion, it's a merging of both. So I'm not discerning, oh, is that hers or mine? It just comes through. Okay. So that's how I work. But again, this is my still perspective because it's coming from, from Suzanne's container. So, you know, I learned this years and years ago with a psychic that told me something and I believed it 100% and it never came true, you know, and it was like, ah. And so we always want to watch that and not give our power away to the psychic or the guide either, you know, just be aware. Use well, it as always free will choice yeah. in this, right? So your guides, like talk, maybe talk about that a little bit. So you're getting guidance, but there's always choices. Yes. So either you're listening or you're not listening to your inner like connected self. Well, let's go back to my male, my male client. He okay. was getting heads up signs. He was getting slowed down. He was getting indicators and he wasn't listening. And I've done this before. I'm no better than anybody else. I mean, I've done it. <laughs> You know, I'm not listening to that. I'm just fine. I can handle it. And then you get the little louder and then it gets a little louder and then you get your ass kicked. And so, and I mean, quite literally sometimes. And so we, we don't have to listen because we do have free will, but mm -hmm. there is also what's called divine will, meaning coming from my higher self is saying, you need to listen to this, or you need to hear this or figure this out. So mm -hmm. this is, there's, there's all different levels of this stuff and nothing is ever one way, right? Because right. the energy changes, we change, our skill sets change, everything changes constantly. So I may be working with my guidance one way. And two days later, that doesn't work for anything. You know, mm -hmm. this has been happening to me a lot lately, by the way. It changes. And that's why I feel you, I think, you know, for me in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I'm not connected anymore. What did I do? Are we okay? Yep. Like what's going on? And like, <laughs> you feel like, like you got kicked out of the club. I know. It's like, where, where are you? Like what's yeah. happening? And, and it's, it's an overreaction, of course, because something's changing. Yeah. And I think that that's part of a uh, transition. Well, if, you, if you retrospect that, Kim, what changed? Were you changing or are they changing? Do you have any clue? I think it could be either because yeah. I feel like um, I know one instance, I, I knew that there was a change in how I was um, like perspective, but also seeing things in my third eye a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was almost like I, I evolved into a little bit different level and I don't know if I changed guides or if, um, I don't know, I don't know why that would kind of go away when you're going through something so big like that, like, so transitional, um, Do you have an opinion? Yeah. And energetic wise, practitioner wise, because you are understanding and enveloped into the resonance frequency of that. So remember, guidance goes along with the dimensional layers, the planes of reality, the planes of existence. And each plane of existence has a prominent, dominant kind of a guide vessel, right? It's This is the plant and animal kingdom. These are the fairies. These are the angels. These are the archangels. These are the aliens, whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we take in that information and fully incorporate it into who we are. We don't have that feeling of the guidance anymore because we're guiding ourselves. Oh, you're in, you're taking it in, into that internal connection. Yeah. And it's so inherent now. It's so second nature now that I don't need the, the fairy. So let's be specific for an example. Oh, the fairies show me this. Oh, the fairies tell me that. Now I work so intimately with the fairies and it's three years later and I'm like, I don't feel like I feel the fairies anymore. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. You literally have become the fairy. You are the fairy and you don't necessarily recognize that because it's a resonance and a frequency vibration that is in your cell structure and becoming your second nature normal. So yeah. I'm not going into the fairy realm and changing a resonance anymore. I am that resonance all the time. 
And, it, and that's important because I, for so many years, I kept thinking whatever it is, is outside of me. It's outside right. of me. And, right. and like my higher self is outside of me. It's yeah. up there somewhere and maybe they'll visit and we all do this. me out and I know like, where are you? <laughs> like what's happening? And um, it isn't, it's all, it's all your essence in you. Well, it's not even just in you. It's everywhere. It is. It's the I am. And it's really hard for us to understand frequency resonance doesn't start and stop with a container that's meat and bone because this isn't even really what we are in some fields. Right. So it's hard for us to feel like we lost a connection with a guide. And actually, you have merged into 100 percent that guidance and it becomes knowledge and information and eventually wisdom. That is so amazing. I right. totally looking at it that way. You know, who's a great one for an example for that is Daryl. What is it? Daryl Anka, who's Bashar. And I watched him not all that long ago and he channels Bashar. And he's that really cool guy that has like the bald head and he also, he also wears like Hawaiian shirts when he channels for some yeah. reason. And yeah. he changes his voice kind of like this. But <laughs> now I watched him on a really big, long, and he's been doing it for like, I don't know, 30 plus years or something. Yeah. He's been doing Bashar. He is Bashar and Bashar is him at this point. And he recognizes that oftentimes in interviews when he's being Daryl. And he's like, you know, at this point, there really isn't a big difference except when he goes into it for the presentation of the channel, which are oftentimes mm. pretty short on online. But um, his wisdom is so much integrated at this point that technically speaking, you're getting the same information from Daryl as you are Bashar most of the time. Maybe Bashar goes a little farther out or whatever, if we want to say farther out, um, you know, but I think basically speaking, you can watch that person be the same intuition, the same knowledge, the same information, the same wisdom, because there's such an integration. And I think we don't think that we do that because we're not, oh, we're not Daryl. We're not Bashar. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, okay. you're, you're your own version of it, right? So when I'm thinking about the human body, I mean, because you're, you're saying that the, 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 your body is a vessel, basically, and yeah. that um, when you are in connection, it has it's really not your body. It's not your DNA. It's not your genetics. It's beyond that. Like your soul level, higher self, higher self, soul. I would take out the word not, not, not because it's all of it. It's oh, all okay. of it. Okay. And so, so what we tend to do is we tend to embody, no pun there, mm -hmm. the information so that it becomes oneness in our body and outside of our body. Remember our energetic auric body is the instruction set for a lot of it. So we're holding instructions way out here when this body's over here, right? I mean, mm -hmm. think of my aura, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got a lot of instruction way out there that is templating and giving me a blueprint of what's happening here. So that keeps going and going and going, the bigger and higher we go into other frequencies so that we do become oneness eventually. So this is again, why it's critical for someone who's really intuitive and psychic to have a discernment factor of that auric boundary to go, okay, is this really mine? Is this for me? Is this too much? Is this sadness? You know, et cetera. Okay. Knowing your own self. Yeah. Really important. Yeah. yeah. So I, and I think I want to um, go back to something that you said in terms of the guidance changes when we have incorporated and intuited and wisdomized. That's a new word I just made up. Um, <laughs> the fairy realm, right? Yeah. Maybe now it's time for me to have the angelics come in or the, or the alien or the light people come in or the, you know, the star people come in. So oftentimes I will find as a practitioner that their guides change. I know my clients and I'm like, holy crap, you just got a whole council in today that's completely new, which is fun for me to see because mm -hmm. people are elevating their skill set. They're elevating their everything. And this isn't a value thing. I'm elevating, so I'm better than you. It's just different information for that person's journey. So we will oftentimes let, we think we let our guide go, but it's just integrated. Right. So your frequency, the vibration and the integration of all of that, you've incorporated it in everywhere, energy yeah. fields into your body, the whole, and then yeah. you're going up a level. So you have different guidance for that next. Yep. It's session. like the, it's the, the higher classroom and the, and the smarter teacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I shouldn't say smarter because then we're putting value to things. I don't mean it that way. 
But, you know, I, when I first started, gosh, so long ago, my very, very first alien experience guide came in and he gave me a name and I was just, I couldn't get it. So I called him Leon, which I'm sure he totally appreciated. <laughs> and, and I called him Leon and he worked with me. This is so probably 17 years ago. Yeah. And I knew nothing about anything starseed wise at all and leon was the first one that helped me understand my auric fields gave me literal guidance on do this do this so that you can learn this 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 and this and i haven't thought about leon or had him in my presence for eons because why he didn't go anywhere that information just transmuted inside of my essence and my being and my wisdom and then i am able to access more and more higher vibrational star people or light beings because that was my entree. So oftentimes we get an entree oh. guide. What's what's an entree guide? Like an entrance guide. Like, like this an entrance is, this is into the next level. Of... The introduction guide. Yeah, this okay. is the introduction to the star people. This is the introduction to the alien realm. I'm going to give you all this information and now others are going to come and help you. So... Oh. But I thought of him the other day because I was writing and I pulled up some notes and I'm like, oh my goodness, I haven't thought of that name forever. Mm -hmm. He's probably still doing this <laughs> or the Leon, <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and I do really weird things. I was in Ireland once and I worked with the fairy realm for a really long time. That was probably the first realm that they introduced me to guidance wise. And I devoured every, this is some of the mechanics that you can do to get better with your guides, by the way. So I devoured every book that I could back then. Doreen Virtue's original stuff was really good. By the way, it still is now that she doesn't own any of it anymore. But if you can go online and get her original fairy cards, fairy books, fairy everything, got great information on the fairy realm. And I was working in the plant and animal kingdom to try my best or do my best in terms of connecting with the fairies understanding what they look like. They come in little pin dot lights for me, et cetera, and worked, 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 worked. And then guidance said, okay, you're done with that realm. We're moving you to, we want you to start learning and studying and practicing with the angelics. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So it was like, I got ripped out of that classroom because I had had enough. Years and years later, I go to Ireland with a friend and um, I remember going onto a parcel of land with her and I'm like, holy crap wrap this land because Ireland is all the little people oh, and the fairies yeah, and right. right and for whatever reason I downloaded all night so for somebody like me what that means is it's just a, it's like a download on your computer you know when you do a reboot on your computer and it just does this all you know for an hour and you have to let it do that or you upgrade your phone and it does this for 20 minutes and you have to let it do that that's what they did to my body with the fairy kingdom and thank god this particular um person I'm just traveling with is also a practitioner and can mm -hmm. understand that I'm flopping around in the night and I'm not dying <laughs> because, you know, my body's doing all these weird things and my hands are doing this. And, and she just in the morning is like, oh my God, Suzanne, I'm like, right. <laughs> but I remember so clearly, Kim, they were bringing it up almost like a holographic textbook. A thing would come up and it would have the fairy and it would have all the stats of the fairy and what kind of fairy and what it did. And what the purpose of that fairy was and blah, blah, blah. And I would go somehow, some way in my sleep. And then whoop, the next one would come up and it went on. And I think it was almost like six hours during that night. I didn't, I didn't sleep that entire night. And she was laughing her head off in the morning. She's like, what did you learn? I go, I'm not sure. So part of me sometimes goes, well, then why the heck did I do that? Yeah. I mean, why like, did, you why do, did I do that? Yeah. Right. Well, because it goes into your subconscious, especially as a practitioner, and I will be able to pull and connect to that realm to my client or myself when needed. But it doesn't come into my consciousness on a daily basis because I've downloaded. It doesn't mean I'm going to all of a sudden leave that dream state and go out into the garden and go, oh, there's a Detta fairy. And this is, you know, it doesn't work that way for me, but it definitely I'm sorry. So what just happened? Totally, something just totally moved across my room. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's a fairy. <laughs> I mean, enough that that grabbed my eye. That's funny. That oh. really happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're probably over there going. Ha, ha. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily work like that, especially with the download. But the information is now embedded in your hard drive. Let's say it that way so that you can access it when needed. Okay. 
So that's kind yeah. of how. Oh, interesting that. So then as you go into like whatever your, I mean, it comes back to what is your like uh, contract mission coming in mm -hmm. and the things that come your way per the guidance or the things that you need to, or you don't need to, but you will experience or have access to, you know, to it's grow. Very individual, very individual and very personal. So again, why would I have the fairy experience years and years ago and then get rebooted in Ireland? Well, because I move information. So if I was in Ireland and my body was walking through the fairy land and needing to understand things to do the work my, my higher self is doing, that's why they reboot and download me. That doesn't happen to everybody. It doesn't mean I'm cool or special, but it doesn't happen to everybody because not everyone does grid work like I do and moves information like I do, but a lot of people do and they're not aware of it. So the guidance will come sometimes when you are in the midst of the need of further work mm. when you're somebody like me. So mm -hmm. I literally am walking along and I know a huge part of me was doing a whole lot of release on programming in Ireland because mm -hmm. there's a lot of really old energy mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, just a lot. And so I was releasing a lot of land energy. And that after the download of the fairies, I am confident that that then that realm was assisting the work that I was doing even further. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, huh. yeah. I, that's not anything that I've experienced. I don't know what I do in my sleep exactly, but yeah, I know sometimes I I'm totally aware and other times I'm not, but I, I remember that vividly. It was really cool. It was like a very, like a college textbook. It was very cool. And, you know, all the information and all the way to the height and the, you know, the color form and the, blah, blah. it was very interesting. Oh um, but uh, I think what's important is, is that I wasn't looking for that. And so sometimes when we are being envious of other people's experiences. Oh, you have Francine. I want a Francine back when I was doing the Sylvia Brown thing. Mm -hmm. I'm missing the fact that Suzanne doesn't work like that. Suzanne's body does something completely different. Honor Suzanne's experience and honor the way that the guys are coming to you. Stop competing. Yes, that was an important lesson for me uh, because I, you know, especially like in Peru, and different things when people are like, oh my gosh, my guide is doing this with me. And it's, my guide is from China way back in whatever, yeah. you know, what I, it's like, what? Yeah. Oh, come on. I don't, I am not, you know, feeling or seeing anything like that. Yeah. Why don't we have a guide? Well, yeah. it, it took time for me to feel, feel the guidance. I don't yeah. know anything more than that. They are there and I trust them and I have faith. That they're so tell there. your listeners what does the feel feel like for you when they are there? Um, one, I know that in, intuitively I am much stronger than mm -hmm. I used to be. I mean, I was pretty numb and shut down. So as I continued to um, do the work and grow, I, I would hear, well, what it feels like is that one, I feel like I've got a good boundary around myself. Yeah so that I can discern what's there and what's not. But the, um, the guidance is definitely a voice in my head that it's not my voice. It's, it's, um, I'll ask questions. Um, but I feel the support and love, I guess, mm -hmm. I think that's what it feels like. Like I'm, I'm not alone, you know? And once I started to trust and have faith in that, that feeling just became stronger in my heart area especially that, um, connection, I guess. Um, and then moving into the angelic realm, which, which is where I'm working in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I feel, I just feel it. I feel the energy when I call in the prayer service, I, I feel the uh, light, um, that comes with that. I feel lighter in myself when mm -hmm. that happens. Um, and then I trust that the words are going to come through for what I'm right. doing for prayer. So, um, it was, it it's all came down to not, it's a literal it. shift. You can yeah. feel it. I think that's what you want to maybe even explain more. What does it, what does your body feel like when your room shifts? Um, it's like a charged, like it feels a little charged in the body, like vibrationally, like it's like, yeah. and 
but also surrounding me. I just yeah. feel very <laughs> um like in tune and protected and more right. balanced, like all of it. Like it just feels um just spectacular. I don't even, it's hard to put words to it, I guess. You know why it's hard to put words? Because yeah. we we have I think destroyed the word love. We've done yeah, so many it's love. ridiculous things with the word love. Mm -hmm. And we can't understand what true love feels like because we want to make it hallmark or we want to make it silly or we want to make it manipulative. All the things we've done to that poor word. It is a love frequency that shifts and changes not only your resonance, but the entire room where you are. And again, this is why it's important to have that boundary so that you recognize, oh, something just came in. Mm -hmm. And it is an enveloping thing. It envelops you. It comes into the room and it changes and then you change. And it is, it's almost like, let's use your realm. It's almost like the angels come in and just go, oh, Kim. Oh, you know? we have you. It's all good. Yeah. Scary. yeah. And it is love, but that's a hard word because people make fun of it. And it's, it's, it's totally it's love and light. Now, you know, talking about it, it's love and light. You just feel yeah. light. You feel the light frequency and, and that love, like that encompassing love. And, you know, what's interesting is then your interactions with people totally changes. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a, like, if I haven't seen somebody for a little bit after going through like a ch that change, uh, it's like, what's different about you? Like, what, mm -hmm. what is that? Like, this is my favorite one. Have you lost weight? You yeah. Lost... It's like, no, my I'm dreams. Actually, I'm actually 10 up, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes yeah. they do that though. I think it's funny because they think you look lighter, which you do, but you're not lighter. Yeah. Well, and that... strangers are different. Yeah. You know, people gravitate to that love and light. So, mm -hmm. you know, like in, just in weird situations, people will come up and talk. And Brad's like, my husband's like, what? why yeah. do people like search you out? And I'm like, Psh, I don't know, whatever. Love and light. <laughs> years ago, years ago, Chuck and I, my husband and I were in, this was back way a long time ago when he was more into all this stuff with me. And we were shopping. I think it was probably Christmas. And we were in this ridiculous line at something like Walmart that was just horrific. And and the person was just like doing the checkout, like, I hate my life right now and I hate everything. And the person was just this, just nasty. Everything was nasty. And I looked at him and I go, okay, this is going to be a little test. Let's have an experiment. This is going to be fun. When we get up to the person, we don't have to say anything different, but just love bomb this kid. Just love bomb this kid because he's having a really difficult time. It's, you know, a crappy time of the year and people are idiots and blah, blah, blah. And I swear to God, we did it. And this, this young person just lit up like a Christmas tree himself. And he was so adorable and 100% different than he was with all the five people in front. And we didn't, do anything or say anything to actually make that change we were just being and it's just we giggled all the way out the door on that one it was like and why I don't do that more often I don't know because it's pretty easy to just love bomb people right, right. I mean right. the mom who's screaming at the kid love bomb them don't judge them you know these are things that we can do so that we're guidance for somebody else I think that that's an interesting perspective so, so anytime you're you're going with that like positive love vibe the results of what that situation is are so much different. Yeah. And they're fascinating. It's yeah, really it is. It's fun to observe for sure. I want to jump back to councils for a minute. Cause there's a lot of people when they get into a higher realm of their meditation or their connection, they will feel like there's several of them, whatever them is, whether it's masters, um, you know, ascended masters will come in, in, in numbers, um, light people will come in in numbers, etc. And oftentimes when I'm working on people, they're on the massage bed over there. And there's just like multitudes of beings. Sometimes there's multitudes of beings, depending on who that person is and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is something interesting too, because a lot of people like on the internet or whoever, um, you know, oh, I channel the council of nine or I channel the council of whatever. Um, I think we all work with councils at different points and whether we consistently use them as a guidance is I think personal choice and whatever your soul mission is, but that is something to be aware of also that they will come in numbers that they will come a lot mm -hmm. and I remember seeing a council one time when I was doing some really off planet stuff that had all these different beings. And I was writing about this the other day too. It had like a alien being that was like a human body and like a fish head. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
that's interesting. <laughs> and then it would have like, you know, the typical alien and then the gray and then the human and then like, and Jesus was even in there, which I don't do a whole lot of work with. I thought that was interesting. And this was something where I was almost, I'm embarrassed to say that, getting reprimanded for something that I didn't maybe do. I don't want to say do correctly, but I I could have done better. And they were giving me um, almost like really strict information. And I was on I was on this side of the table looking at the council and the council's working with me, right? Yeah. You got it. Right. And as I'm looking at all these beings, I'm like, holy cow, you know, and they're saying, blah, 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 blah. And as I'm scanning the entire room on this side of the table, I also see me on that side of the table. Oh, that's freaky. Okay. It was super right. freaky. And that's I'm like, crazy. okay, that's interesting. So it really was a knowing for me to say, Again, we put our power into guidance a lot, which is great, but you are in charge of that guidance. You are the one who is guiding the guidance also. So please, if you choose, invite yourself to know that you are the power. It is no different to give that power to an ascended master or a guide than it is to my mom or my boss, right? Mm -hmm. We want to take the information, take the wisdom, take the love, take the everything, but know that I'm the one that's commanding this. Mm -hmm. So can we command an angel? Yeah. That's like, well, I don't know. I can't command an angel. Yeah, well, you're not commanding an angel. You're commanding the, the self the higher self, the lower self, the conversation, the thing. So I'm not commanding that angel, I'm commanding. And a lot of people go, I can't command. Uh-huh, you can, you know, mm -hmm. or I can't invoke. That's one of the words. People are like, I can't invoke that. I can't bring that on. I can't bring that to fruition. Yes, you can. And so in some instances, the guides also actually wait for your asking. They wait for your asking. And this is really important for us to know because if we're not asking, we're not going to get it because they can't intervene, especially in the angelic realm. It is not their job to intervene until they are asked mm -hmm. and invoked and commanded. So these are really words that people have this hesitancy to go, oh my God, they're way more important than me. Again, we do this hierarchy. They're way more important. I'm down here. I'm the lowly little human. I can't invoke mm -hmm. or ask. Yes, you can. So this is an important step in having a relationship. Secondly, ask questions and counter the information if you choose. That was what I found myself doing the more I was getting into the star world out there. I'm like, why am I doing that? Why do you want me to move that? Why do you want me to move that longitude latitude? Why do you want me? What am I doing that for? So I, as Suzanne, as a human, was 100% confident that I was doing light work, not anything that had an agenda that I, and I watched my body constantly to feel that knowing that I'm 100% in this. And if ever there was a little tiny, tiny wiggle factor, that's one of those, watch out for that. And you better honor that because the sometimes the guidance isn't what you think it is. And that's not to scare people. It's to understand that it's your responsibility to know this is integral information and a real guide. Well, then go back to when, when you say uh, wiggle or whatever, yep. that there's a little, what's that? There's like? a little, there's a little nagging that the human does. There's a, in my particular thing, they were asking me, my guidance was asking me to do this particular um, off planet project. And I was like, okay. And I asked a million questions. What do I do? How do I do it? Why am I doing this? And I'm getting the information and a teeny, and I'm saying teeny sliver of me was like. Didn't uh, resonate. Yeah. Yeah, just, and I mean, we're talking like this much. And I did partial work on it. The next day I was doing more work on it. And I was doing work on it for about three days. And that little tiny sliver was opening up a little bit more nagging. And I would find myself doing menial things. And all of a sudden I'm like, I, I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And I went in and I challenged that thing and unfolded it and reversed everything and undid it all. Because I found that that was actually not a true guide coming through. It was a a dark agenda guide. And that doesn't happen to everybody just walking around trying to connect with their grandma or their angels, but it does happen to practitioners that are out there doing really big movement in the, in the grid patterns or the hologram. And so be aware of that. You know, we don't want AI guidance. We don't want bullshit nefarious agendas talking to us thinking that they're angels, you know? So I always go in and check my body. And I always ask three times, because I work with Trinity a lot, are you for my highest and best? 
Are you for my highest and best? Or are you fully of the light? Are you fully of the light? And I do it three times and my body will respond accordingly. And by that third time, I'll know. And oftentimes this has happened in different instances with me. By the third time, that thing will disappear because it's not of the light. It's not. Yeah. Mm, that's so, I, I haven't experienced anything like that where it, it's you, it's me asking, you know, um, or it's the decision is there or the opportunities there. And I feel good about what that is. It's, it's, yep. um, if not, you have the wiggle factor of not a hundred percent good, you know, yeah, right. Right. Which by the way, I do use even, you know, with the voice and feeling my body and stuff, I'll still use my pendulum quite a bit, good. you know, and go through and ask the questions, you know, yes. to make sure that I'm doing what I should be doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And, and I think right now it's really difficult because there is so much floating through the cosmos and the ethers that is false guidance, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and it's also interesting to me because the, I'm going to wrap it up with this. The person who's getting the guidance will get the guidance at the frequency that they're at. Oh, so I was doing a psychic gallery once and I was doing a channeling of somebody's dead relative or whatever. And I was getting some information and I had this really rude woman in my class stand up and say, well, I'm a psychic and I'm a channeler and I can hear her relative right now. And I'm getting completely different information. And hers was very negative and that it was very 3D. It was very this, that, and the other thing. And I sat there and I'm like, wow, this is interesting. You know, totally challenged me in my class, which was fine. And I stood there and I said, and you know what? You are 100% right. You are 100% right for the guidance level that you're getting your information because your frequency and your resonance is here. Mine is here. Ah. Uh, and it wasn't value. Again, I'm not cooler or better, but mine was higher in frequency of love. So therefore the information that was coming through in guidance was more loving. Hers was lower and it was more manipulative. Oh, wow. so watch that too, in terms of if guidance is manipulative, you've got some work to do. Right. Right. Cause you're giving your power away to that information, right? Well, right. it's also a lot of attraction. I'm finding yeah. the guidance that mm -hmm. I'm resonating at. And so it's our job with, it's a two way conversation relationship. I'm working with guides to heighten my frequency, to lighten myself up in more love and light. But if I'm not doing that, my guidance is coming in in a lower frequency, which isn't always necessarily helpful. That's so, um, that's such important information because you don't, like you said, that sliver of doubt or that, n n you know, nudge. Um, but then the information itself, if it doesn't resonate, don't yeah. grab onto it, cut it yeah. out. Um, is that, that just you know, I mean, you, if you trust and have faith in there, you know, right. what that sits like in you. And there's an integrity in the information. If your guidance doesn't have integrity and you are doing your best to be integral, mm -hmm. you know, that's a disconnect and a non-guide, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a nefarious guide. And so it's very important for you with your own free will choice and command to go, yeah, we're done with you. I'm going <laughs> to do some work on myself, <laughs> you know? There you, so, there you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm, a lot, right? Yeah, right. This yeah. is really good information, and especially right now because the energy I feel is um, moving us forward in the ascension process. Mm -hmm. You know, and to ask for what you need, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make that connection and ask for what you need, and um, ask for signs. Make it fun. Yeah, you know, right. and you don't have to have a name. That's something people get really caught up in. Mm -hmm. Or I have to have my animal totem and I have to know it's my guide is actually a lion. You know, those are all very 3D things, which is fine. If that's how you roll, that's great. But I don't really care about things like that. Mm -hmm. I was astounded that my guide did come through with a name and it was frustrating. And when I renamed it, Leon, I, it. it's like, I didn't even respect the name anyway, because it's just not what I care about. So, and I remember just this thing going like this, but um, yeah, so I don't, for me personally, I don't need that, but a lot of people need that. And that's okay, because that's what you're clinging on to for more of a manifested form of that guidance. I actually have a name. I have a face, you know, a lot of times I just have energy. I just have the field. So I think similar to thinking that like God is a man on a cloud, like you don't. <laughs> 
you don't yeah. have to have the body and the, you know, it's similar to that. Yeah. Like, because it gives it a, a limited personality form. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Well, that yeah. makes it better. I mean, yeah, that's. So yeah. very quickly we can see guides in different ways. So like when I'm working with like the fairy realm, they're very pin dot, little teeny tiny lights mm -hmm. about this big and they're just little pin dots. And I can literally watch my client on the table with my eyes open covered with little pin dots all around them. And I immediately will know, oh, that's their fairy realm. That's what they have. And the angelics will come in a little bit more of an orb. Um, I don't oftentimes see the angelic come in in full forms with the wings, but I have. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the actual archangels come in with the full wing thing. Again, we are the perspective of that. They are not that we perspectively put that on that shape so that we can identify with it. Um, light beings and angelics for me oftentimes are just wiggle factors, kind of like the heat that's coming off the pavement in the summertime, just that energy signature. Oh. Um, orbs will come and change. Um, you know, that kind of a wiggle factor can turn into an orb or vice versa. There's no real norm for me. Um, but most of the time when I'm really in the realm where I am most comfortable, the light people look a lot, <laughs> a lot like the movie Cocoon when they take off the human form and they're just those light bodies. Oh so yeah, the very original crack cocoon did a really good job when they go into the pool and they unzip their human form and they drop the human suit and they're just these light beings. That's like, oh, that's what I see. So that's what I see the most. And um, you know, sometimes the actual for me guides that are um alien, I will see distinctly, oh, that's a praying mantis, or that's an ant person, or that's a you know, an Arcturian, or I can see distinct differences in their manifested form. Mm -hmm. um but again we're pulling that through so we're aware and we're dissecting down oh that's a praying mantis form you know so mm -hmm. i in in truth i would think it's just an energy signature like anything else right right oh. well that, that makes sense i mean because we're all energy signatures so yeah. um, i oftentimes wonder if we're guides for them hmm. and <laughs> They see our form and go, hmm, that's interesting. Look at that human thing. I, it, It's the same thing my brain does when we do paranormal work and ghosts see us because yeah. we're the ghost. Like, what are you doing? Why are you in my house? Like, what are you doing in my house? And it's the wrong time frame and it's the wrong historical line and the whole nine yards. And the ghost is like, Ugh. you know, because we're technically the ghost, right? Right. So I oftentimes think that the alien might be doing the same thing or the angel or the fairy might be going, wow, look at that big thing, you know? <laughs> right? I know. That's a whole different perspective I haven't thought about. That's for sure. <laughs> That's what I do in my, <laughs> my time off. <laughs> okay. Anything else that I can clear up on that one? Uh, no, I think that was really good. I think people okay. should ask questions for sure, because for sure. You know, it, it's an introduction into looking at, you know, the guides in this way, if you haven't before, is um, it takes practice and, and time, you know, yeah. to make that connection potentially. So, And write it down if you choose, because it is fun to go back and watch your history. I mean, that's what I'm doing while I'm writing again to go back and look at some of my notes. And I'm like, oh, I forgot <laughs> that one, you know. So it is kind of fun to watch your historical you know, progression of going through the different planes of existence that yeah. have different guidance. It's kind of cool. And by the way, we don't have to do this. There isn't an order. Like I don't learn earth, wind, water, fire, plant, animal, kingdom, human, angel, you know, I don't do it this way necessarily, but oftentimes I do do it this way because I'm going this way. Meaning, mm -hmm my own frequency is going higher and higher and higher. So I'm accessing or opening the door to those higher beings. So mm -hmm. sometimes it does correlate and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Cause many people just make a huge jump, right? Like yeah. boom. Or some people like me jump backwards. Like yeah. I was introduced to the aliens first and I had to work real hard to go back into the earth kingdom and go, Oh, that's what that feels like. So mm -hmm. it depends on your resonance. and, and Yeah. What Cause we're opposite. I started yeah. earth. Yeah. Making my way up. Yeah. So it's all the same stuff, just different. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, good luck, everybody. Like Kim said, this is a great time to possibly connect a little bit further, do a little bit homework on yourself and make it fun and make it your own because there is no right or wrong to any of this. Mm -hmm. So again, we thank you for your time for tuning in. If you choose to subscribe, hit the like button, share button, any of that, it's awesome. And maybe give us a comment so we can further assist you down the road. And until next time, everybody.
cosmic hugs. Goodbye.